Today's lesson is on protein synthesis. Translation part two. If you haven't seen the first part, which is a transcription, you should see that now. As a matter of fact, what I would recommend if you haven't seen the one on DNA structure, that would help out immensely because it helps give out a variety of different structural uh, components and languages um, that are really necessary to, to understand this. Translation. And here is a, a quick overview in this picture of what uh, not only transcription but also translation is, the entire process of protein synthesis. We start, if you look at the um, upper left-hand corner of this uh, picture, you'll notice transcription is, is being done. Um, it involves DNA as well as messenger RNA. DNA, after it duplicates, will open up one side of the strands to be copied. And that's when messenger RNA nucleotides will start fitting themselves together to make messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is similar to, R to DNA, but there are a couple of very important differences. DNA is two strands, and messenger RNA is one strand. Uh, DNA has four very distinct uh, types of bases. Adenine goes with thymine. Cytosine goes with guanine. Now, when we get to messenger RNA, that one strand is also made up of bases. Adenine goes with your ur cell instead of thymine. And, of course, the rest of the bases are the same. The other um, additional feature that messenger RNA has has a P cap, and we also has a multi-A cap at, at the end. That helps protect the message in, in the center. Once messenger RNA has dutifully uh, copied and transcribed or copied or written down the code, the recipe of DNA, it will be released and then, of course, exit out through the nuclear pore. When the nuclear pore allows it to go in, that's when we uh, start translation. And translation really is is nothing more than translating a, a language made up of bases, that's DNA and RNA language, it's made up of bases, the words basically are bases, uh, to a protein language where its words are based primarily um, in amino acids. So in translation, it's, it's really that, it's translating a code in, in RNA and translating it into our protein language. So it, it's, uh, of course, carried through the, the messenger, which is messenger RNA. As it leaves the nucleus, it travels through the cytoplasm and settles and, or, or finds itself into the uh, um, um, ribosomal RNA. And then the messenger RNA will kind of settle in the lower part of it called the uh, small subunit, whereas another RNA called transfer RNA is going to be settling in the large uh, subunit, which is above it. And that transfer RNA will be carrying amino acids. And the amino, acid, amino acids will be linked together in polypeptides and then folded together to make a functional protein. So that's in a nutshell. And, of course, that particular drawing is kind of like a peanut. So in a nutshell, um, that's what um, translation is about, converting RNA language into a protein language. Now, the major players in translation are... First and foremost, uh, um, messenger RNA. So you can see in this particular picture, it has um, three um, base uh, uh, bases. When you put the three together, it makes one codon. That codon is going to code for a particular amino acid, which in the correct sequence of amino acids will make a protein that DNA wanted it to make. So those codons uh, are listed on that, on that strand, and the codons are made of three bases. So that's messenger RNA. Then we also get to ribosomal RNA, or excuse me, yeah, ribosomal RNA, or we know it as a ribosome. It's made up of two halves, a large subunit and a small subunit. The messenger RNA that you can see um, right there, right underneath the thing that looks like cocoa puffs, um, let me draw that right there. The messenger RNA is going to lay itself in the smaller subunit right in here. And uh, as it does that, the, the transfer RNA will fit in the larger component right in here. And you can see part of the polypeptides coming out right here. That brings us to our next player, and that is transfer RNA. In this drawing, you can see this part right here is our three-dimensional model, what it looks like. And this is the two-dimensional model. We're going to be using this one primarily. But uh, amino acids will attach itself right here 
on that drawing, it would attach itself on this one right here. So those amino acids, which each one of these um, balls represent, uh, will then make up the protein. And of course, lastly, the other major player is an amino acid, whether it be valine or alanine or, or a variety of other. Uh, there are 21 different uh, essential um, amino acids. They will make up the, of course, a building block for protein. Um, depending on what book you read or scientists you talk to, there's a variety of different steps. I've broken into five steps to try to, to make it a little bit easier for students to, to understand. So these are steps. First thing is messenger RNA is going to leave the nucleus. If you look at this picture here, here's messenger RNA right down here. And here's messenger RNA leaving through a nuclear pore. That nuclear pore will allow it to leave and it will find its home, its final resting home, uh, while it's being um, read right here in the lower half of the ribosome or this small subunit. It's, it'll be resting right there so that the transfer RNA can read this codon. So that brings us to the uh, next thing is messenger RNA, as I said before, settles itself right in the ribosome. This whole thing right here is a ribosome and this portion right here is the small subunit and messenger RNA is feeding itself through here and being read basically three bases at a time. And that's called a codon. This codon is being read by transfer RNA. And then the polypeptide is kind of squirting out through the top right here, as you can see this right there. That brings us to the, our, our next stage. And that's when tRNA or transfer RNA will match up with messenger RNA with inside the ribosome. And here's a picture of it. Here's the messenger RNA. These three things right here, that's called the codon. The codon is what the messenger RNA got directly from the original recipe from DNA. This codon is going to code for a particular amino acid that has to fit in a certain sequence of amino acids to make a protein that does something that the DNA instructs it to do. And then if we look at this part of it, that's an anticodon. The anticodon matches up with the codon so that it can deliver the, the, the correct amino acid in the correct location. So that is step number three. Step number four has to do with amino acids. The amino acids, as I said before, are being carried on the transfer RNA. And here's a great picture. Now, we, we've kind of made it very, very simplistic. But here's a transfer RNA, or tRNA, and it's carrying with it one amino acid. And what's going to happen as it takes its place down here on the messenger RNA strand, it's going to release its amino acid actually is going to pick up the rest all the other amino acids right here so this one can release its amino acid and go out and find another one get kind of reloaded up and going going for a next round so as is as this one comes in its place it's going to form a, a peptide bond with a new amino acid and create a polypeptide chain of amino acids and as it does that when it gets to a stop codon this amino um, or this codon might actually mean stop. So when that happens, then that chain's broken and that amino acid chain or polypeptide chain will go out and get folded up into making that protein. Okay, in step five, that strand has to be folded in a precise way in order for it to, to work correctly. So as we look in this picture, here's the polypeptide chain. Its secondary structure is these pleated sheets, beta pleated sheets. And then as it is being folded in its many different configurations, whether it be in a helix or the tertiary structure, it then finally gets its shape the way it wants to. And then it's carried off or escorted off into the exact location it needs to be. Really elegant structure from a very simplistic type of code. Now, the next thing I want to show you is, uh, you, if you watched video one, you saw a little brief uh, clip from this uh, video. I'm going to show it to you again. I'm going to fast forward it uh, through most of it so we can get right to the translation part. So I'm going to just take it right on through here, right to the very first part, and there we go. 
Now what you're going to see next is as this molecule or this, uh, this chain of, D of RNA, messenger RNA, makes its way into the cytoplasm, it's going to find it's the ribosome. And here it is right here. And these are right here, these three things right in here, they're going to be the uh, codon that this transfer molecule, um, transfer RNA molecule will read. It's going to line up the anticodon with the codons. It's bringing this amino acid right here. That amino acid is linking up and bonding right here. And you can see these will leave and it'll find another amino acid somewhere else. Again, these link up. It passes on its amino acid to form this polypeptide chain. Just like an assembly line, one after another and making very few mistakes. And here is our polypeptide chain. It hits a stop command in our um, messenger RNA strand. It releases it. It will now uh, get into this um, kind of uh, uh, barrel machine and it's going to start folding it in certain ways in which um, it will be a functional protein. So there goes the folding. As it folds, it, it uh, is linking up and creating bonds with other parts of the polypeptide chain. And then without this precise shape that DNA has already deemed for it, it really wouldn't work very well. And once it's formed, it's going to leave this barrel-shaped machine and be escorted to the exact part of the, the cell um, that it's needed. Again, really, uh, uh, from a very simple code, is a very elegant machine. Now, I've already stated a couple of different times, from this very simple type of model, from this very simple uh, type of molecule, we have so many complexities uh, within our planet. Basically, we're 3% away in terms of uh, our base pairs from a banana. It's 97% just like us. So it's a universal code but it's simple and it's elegant. And how we get complex, uh, complex organisms to make you, you, and me, me is amazing. Just like it made this little guy 57 years ago. Thanks. We'll see you later.